to Bridges to Gamma podcast and to Bridges to Gamma YouTube channel. My name is Barbara. I am here to talk to you about meditation. This video is for you if meditation doesn't work for you. I practice as an emotional healing facilitator. And in my work, I meet different people with different reasons behind the statement, meditation doesn't work for me. And I believe that meditation is a natural state for all of us. That is a wonderful tool that can help you in your healing process, just in everyday life in achieving whatever you want to achieve or creating whatever you want to create. And that it is fully blossoming in our life when we incorporate that spiritual aspect of us that is forgotten in our modern society. And emotional healing work is slightly different than counseling or psychotherapy because it is focusing on focusing on giving you back the power so you are learning how to navigate through the ups and downs of your emotional life. And it is also highlighting the importance, how important the spiritual aspect of human life is. And especially when it comes to the healing processes. Okay, so let's focus on the subject. Why meditation doesn't work for you? Or maybe you are curious why it doesn't work for your partner, for example. So when I approach someone that says that it doesn't work for them, I usually get curious. And I start to encourage that person to start to observe themselves firstly. And there is that little trick in here. Because as you start to observe yourself, you are actually going within. You are changing your focus point from the outside world to you to the way you feel, to the way your body feels, to this, what your mind is doing. And this is already a layer of a meditative state. I say a layer because you can go deeper, deeper, and deeper. All right. So what do, you, what do I mean when I say I encourage someone to observe themselves? <sighs> All right. How to explain that? Basically, we want meditation to work for you. So it's not about you adjusting to a certain form of meditation, like for example, mindfulness meditation, because you're just gonna go through the recordings and recordings and wait till the timer will stop and it's, it's the end and of the practice and it will simply doesn't give you, it will not give you the benefits that you are looking for. So instead of just seeing a meditation practice as something that you have to reach out for and change yourself to match this higher frequency, what I am proposing is observe yourself, figure out what kind of energy you carry. And I will say more about that in a second. What are your thoughts doing? How does your body feel? And let's adjust meditation to you. There is so many different ways of practicing meditation. And my goal is that you can feel, the moment you will feel that space within you, the moment you will feel how, how I like to say, tasty meditation is, you will want to come back to this meditation pillow and do your practice. Okay, so let's use a little example here with that observation. So I have one client, yes, and it is an imaginary client. I'm just creating an example in here. A man is coming into the sessions and he says that he cannot meditate. It doesn't work for him. So I encourage him to observe himself, to check in with his energy. 
and to describe it back to me. And as he's doing that, something is happening with his consciousness state. You see, in our everyday life, we go mostly, we are active mostly on our beta brainwave. This brainwave is useful when you have to go through your to-do list, go from task to task during your day. And it's very much focused outside. When you are stressed, you go to the higher beta brainwave and flight or fight, flight or fight mode. And it is very difficult to go within into the meditative state from that fight or flight mode. But that is a subject for another podcast. So we have that man on the beta brain where focused outside. And as I ask him to observe his energy slowly, because that depends from the person, he starts to go within. And usually, so for this client, imaginary client, it was very difficult to describe his energy. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know what even, what he's even describing. And he, he just couldn't start. So I encouraged him to inform me, start to just, just tell me how, how is it throughout your day? How is your energy in the morning? How are you acting when you are out with friends? How is your energy when you're going out to nature? Tell me the story. And he had to kind of jump, take a step, which that was the first step. And it was difficult to go from this focus outside on to do, to do, to do least to start to describe his energy. But that was the first step towards meditative state to realize, oh, I can't even, what do you want from me? <laughs> How, what, my energy, describe what? It's very important to find yourself in that place when it is difficult for you to meditate. So then I guided him, I encouraged him to describe, as I said before, his day and how his energy is changing. And he started to describe that he is very active, that he is loud in the room and likes to go into the discussions with others, that he comes down when he goes to the nature. And we realized that his energy is strong, that he is actually connected to nature. And that the next step, when he already was more focused inside was to use um, that more metaphoric, symbolic description, colors, shapes, symbols. Few minutes before, it would be impossible for that man to describe his energy like that. It would be too big of a jump. But now he can imagine his energy as a color. He can imagine his energy as, and let's say that he says, my energy is dense, strong, and it's radiating with blue light, let's say, you know? And he just, he's able to say that because he's more and more tuned within. And he's just describing what he's feeling. And now that branches out. You have to always find with yourself or with your clients something that works for you. If it's not color, maybe it's a sound. If it's not a sound, maybe it's a shape. If it's not a shape, maybe it has a temperature. Sometimes when I work with people, it's only one word. Spiky, dense, dark, strong. Sometimes they go more into detail in describing their energy. But the point of this exercise is to switch from beta brainwave to alpha brainwave and to go within. Then you look at your thoughts. What is your mind doing? Is your mind going to overthinking? 
Is there an action? Oh, am I doing it right going on? Is your to-do list coming back <laughs> and is being projected for you in your inner screen? Or maybe some other thoughts start to come to the surface. And again, this is another level, <laughs> layer, another level, I should actually say deeper level. I'm pointing up, I should put down deeper level. As you start to observe your thoughts, you kind of go into theta brainwave, and then our aim is to take you to gamma brainwave, which is this what we meditators serve. This is the wave that we serve in the meditation. However, Already, if you're able to go into the alpha mode, you will regenerate, you will get creative, you will relax. If you are able to go into the theta brainwave, and this is also achieved with hypnosis or yoga nidra, or if you do something that is uh, repetitive, you are able to regenerate your body and to in the healing process. And again, that is a subject for another podcast, Theta Brainwave and Healing Process. What you can notice when you are in that semi-awake, semi-dreamy state. It's a wonderful source for progress in your healing journey. But all right, let's come back to the main subject now. You are observing your mind and you are actually going deeper within. You're observing your thoughts automatically, as you will observe your thoughts, you will observe your emotions as well. They are connected. You will have emotions about the thoughts that are rising. Get curious. Observe them. You are going deeper. You are doing great. And then the aim of this level is exactly that, to take you deeper. And throughout all this process, you can have your eyes open. You can draw whatever you see. You don't have to sit. You don't have to try to observe your thoughts or just blank them out and come back to the breath. No, you are using your mind to observe. You're making a team, mind, body, spirit. Yes. And this is what you want, harmony. Because meditation is a frequency of harmony, of alignment. And I want you to be closer to this frequency. And step by step, we are getting there. All right? Okay. Third level, your body. We are forgetting that body carries our emotions. Carries the story of your clan in the DNA in every cell of your body. Your body remembers more than you can imagine. And this is a very deep level and very emotional level when you are able to turn into that. So it could be all right, I'm sorry, it could be better for you firstly to focus on these first two levels to observe your energy and observe your thoughts. And then if you're able to tune into your body, maybe again, at first you want to describe where there is tension in the body, where there is free space in your body, space for movement, where you maybe see or feel different colors, different shapes in your body. Describing the sensations in your body. Like you may say, I feel the needle in my back, or I feel the movement in my forehead on the area of third eye, which is one of the chakras. You can say I feel tingling on my crown chakra on top of my head. Or you can say I can feel that my heart is melting. Or you can say I can feel that my stomach is anxious. And for this imaginary example client, firstly, he could only describe the tension in his neck. And the, then the sensation of fear, anxiety in his stomach. And then after a while, he was able to go deeper. And he was surprised that when he was connecting with his body, tears would come up. 
And this is part of the emotional healing. So if you are not experiencing in that level uh, of being present with yourself, it is good to ask someone to be there with you, a guide or a friend, someone that you could trust, that you know that that person will not judge you, that that person will support you and that that person is able to help you to integrate everything what happened. Okay. So I was talking about why meditation doesn't work for you. And I actually gave you the keys of how to adjust meditation to your needs. And the first step was to get curious and start to observe your energy, your thoughts, and then how your body feels. So we, as you see, we are going from here, from a certain level, deeper, deeper, and deeper. And this is, this is basically how. Why meditation doesn't work for you? Because maybe your energy is out of balance and you focus too much outside. And that's the way you were for years in your life. And it just won't work for you to sit down and bliss out just like that. There is another reason. There could be a deep sensation of being unsafe. Yeah. Something connected with trauma that doesn't allow you to close your eyes and go within because there is unresolved trauma that you haven't dealt with. And you may be very spiritual and very aware, but then meditation is a no-no for you because there is something that you are not ready to look at. And that is, again, a subject for another podcast. Stress is an important aspect as well. If you are very, very, very stressed, and I mentioned about that in the beginning of this video, you are on the fight or flight mode. Your body, and then I have to add in here that chronic stress is different than the acute stress. We can deal with acute stress. Something scares us. We have to deal with something which is overwhelming, but it is an acute stress, an accident. Something is happening in the moment. Your body, your mind is helping you to survive and you should be able to shake it off later. Shaking, subject for another podcast. There is a whole school about how shaking is a wonderful medicine to help us to deal with trauma and stress. Chronic stress, on the other hand, is something that constantly keeps you on that higher beta brainwave in that fight or flight mode, constantly, day after day, day after day. You don't even remember how to relax. And in that state, meditation will be very difficult for you. So how to deal with that? Firstly, you have to let your body know that it doesn't have to be on that flight or fight mode. There may be deeper emotional reasons why you are convincing yourself that you have to go, 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 go. But usually, if you just apply some breathing exercises, you let your body know that as you are breathing in a certain way that, hey, this guy, this woman now, they are breathing in that relaxed way. They must be all right. Your body has to be on board. Your body has to know that you are safe. So for someone that is in that chronic stress mode, I would advise a series of breathing exercises. So you would first go into the practice that is not meditation, kind of meditation, yes? but they're breathing exercises and you do this accordingly. Again, we are adjusting that to your needs accordingly to this, what you need. Sorry, I just looked at the magpie just came into my windowsill. Okay. Firstly, observe yourself and realize that you are stressed, that you are in the chronic stress and then choose, make a conscious choice to apply those breathing exercises on a daily basis. It could be three minutes. Start somewhere. 
because otherwise you're going to the burnout mode. Okay. So let's summarize. Let's do the summary here. If meditation doesn't work for you, you can make it work for you. You can adjust meditation to your needs, to the way you are in the moment. And the second you will feel that inner peace, you will want to come back to that meditation pillow. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Again, my name is Barbara and this is Bridges to Gamma platform. Leave me a comment, contact me on Instagram or check out my website. There is a contact form. If you like this video, give me thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. I would love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day. Take care.